Hello, everyone. It's 930. It's time to start our first session. I'll, I'll let everyone get seated. Uh, and once everyone gets seated, uh, it's time to start our first session. Um, it's my uh, pleasure uh, to introduce um, the Berry Brothers to give a presentation about uh, Adlam, the power of his script, uh, origin, impact, and challenges. So let's give them all a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Abdullah Berry. Um, originally from Guinea in West Africa. Um, I live in Portland, Oregon. Oops, sorry, guys. Maybe I'll just get rid of this. <laughs> oh, my neck. Yeah, it's, I think it's okay. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah. So I, as I was saying, so my name is Abdullah, and I'm from Portland, Oregon. I'm originally from Guinea, uh, and I'm here with my brother today to talk about Adlam. Um, you can present <laughs> Okay. My name is Ibrahim. Uh, like my brother, we are from Guinea, and I live in Portland too, working for the city of Portland. Yeah. And we are the creators of the Adlam alphabet. Um, but currently, I work for Intel in their finance department. And like my brother said, he works for the city of Portland. So thank you all for having us. Um, we wanted to share with you a little bit of the story of Adlam and you know some of the challenges and the successes that we've had with the alphabet uh, over the past few years, uh, especially with the help of Unicode, Google, Microsoft, etc. So this is the agenda. So we created the alphabet for our people, which are called the Fulani people. So we'll talk a little bit about them, talk about the language for which the script was created, and then we'll talk about the process uh, briefly about how we went about creating Adlam, and then where Adlam is today, and some of the challenges, like I said, and the successes that we've had. So as I mentioned, um, uh, we are uh, part of a community called Fulani people, uh, we estimate it to be more than 70 million people uh, found in Africa in more than 20 countries from the Atlantic Ocean all the way almost to the uh, Red Sea uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, we are called uh, Fulani in English, and that's because that's the word they got from the house of people. The French people call us Pearl, and but we call ourselves Pullo if it's one or Fulbe. Um, there are many sub other subgroups that belong to the Fulani people. Um, we have the Warabe, the Torobe, the Otukular. We also have Bororo, Wasulon, Kasonte, etc. And that's why sometimes you might see different estimates of the number of Fulani people, because it depends on whether these subgroups are included as part of the Fulani people or excluded. And we speak a language called uh, uh, Fulfulde or Pular. It's called Fulfulde when you are east, uh, east of the Niger River, east of the country of Mali, but it's also called Pular uh, when you are west of the country of Mali, in the countries of Guinea, uh, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Mauritania, etc. the language is called uh, Pular. But if you go to Nigeria, Cameroon, or Sudan, they call the language Fulfulde. It's the same language, though. Uh, it's spoken, like I said, by more than 70 million, and it's also recognized as a national language in some of the countries, like in Guinea, in Burkina Faso, in Mali, etc. It's a language of communication between many communities in West Africa. Uh, for example, in Guinea, where I'm from, in the capital, half of the country, you know, speak uh, in Pular or Fulfulde. In Northern Cameroon, also, is the lingua franca there uh, between communities. Um, at, Pular has been written uh, for a very long time. Originally, when the Fulani people embraced Islam, they started using the Arabic script called the Jami to write Pular. But uh, we had some challenges with it, uh, but it was widely used despite all of that because that was the main way of people for people to communicate. And then when the Europeans came with colonization, they introduced the Latin script. Uh, people who were normally 
um, who went to school uh, in the uh, colonial schools uh, learned that alphabet and eventually it, it's been embraced uh, by some countries, uh, but not all of them. Um, so it's mostly used in Senegal and also in Mauritania. Mauritania is an interesting case because there is used as a way to basically um, resist against the Arabization because they want to promote uh, writing and learning all of the languages, but the government usually recommend or put pressure on people to use Arabic script. But people, um, you know, are resisting that uh, by using the, the the Latin script. But recently, there have been, you know, movements to embrace Adlam because people feel like it's more authentic. It's part of us. So there are also some differences which uh, present a challenge for using the Latin script across Africa because not all countries have adopted it. And even in some of the countries that have adopted it, they still have like it's small differences in how they write. Uh, for example, I give example here on Nya for how it's written in, in Mauritania, Mali, or Nigeria. And for example, the word Gandal, would you write it with two N's or one N? So those are some of the issues uh, that the alphabet is facing um, across many countries in Africa. But you know, as I said, when we were young growing up, most people um, used the Ajami script to write Polar. And that's how, you, if you wanted to communicate with a relative that lived in another city, you use the alphabet. But the problem with it is that uh, Arabic is not similar to Polar. We have unique sounds in Polar that cannot be uh, reproduced using the Arabic script. For example, ya, da, na, those are some of the sounds. So because there was no standard established, so everyone was just writing the way they feel like writing those sounds. And that caused a problem uh, for people to read letters. So in order to read you know, a letter written by someone, you have to be very familiar with the language um, because there was a lot of guesswork uh, involved in trying to read it. And because we, were, we had experience with that, because my dad used to read or write letters for people in our community, we learned firsthand how difficult it is to use the Arabic script to write our language. So my brother and I, we decided to create Adlam. Um, so that was back in 1989. Uh, I was um, a little over 10 and my brother was around 14. So after schools, we would uh, lock ourselves in our room, close our eyes and start randomly drawing. And then when we open, uh, we'll pick, you know, uh, signs or symbols that look like um, that we could use as letters or we could imagine shapes you know um, based on our community or our environment and use those to represent some of the letters so we call the writing system bindi polar which literally means the polar writing system it consisted of 28 letters uh, written right to left and 10 numerals also right to left uh, so when we created the alphabet, we talked to our dad about it, and he didn't believe us. He brought somebody uh, who used to work for the government to come and test us. He tested us. He would ask uh, my brother, for example, to leave the room, and uh, he will ask me to write something, and then I'll write it, and then he'll ask my brother to come and read it. He did that to me also, asked me to leave, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until he, you know, he gave us all of the hard words that he would he could think of in Pular for us to write and we would write them. And then he turned to my dad, told them that he thinks that we are right. We've created an alphabet for our language that can write uh, any word uh, that's spoken in Pular. Uh, then we started um, teaching it in our, we started with our sister uh, in our house, taught, we taught our cousins, etc. Then we went to the market and started teaching people there and in the neighborhoods. And eventually the alphabet spread from there into um, other towns and eventually to other countries like Senegal and Sierra Leone, etc. Back then, all of it was written uh, by hand because you couldn't type it. Uh, if you wrote a book, <clears throat> if you wanted to multiply that book, you know, you have to rewrite it uh, because ba back then we even have access to photocopiers. Or there was something that used to be called carbon copy. We put a paper on top of it and put another paper on, below it. And then that's how we would write, you know, at least two books at once or three books at once. But the problem with that is when you, whenever you made a mistake, you basically had to 
uh, start over from scratch because you completely lose all of uh, those papers. Um, <clears throat> so there was a challenge with that, especially when more people started to learn Adlang. So we realized that, you know, in order to uh, to face these challenges, to satisfy the high demand for learning material and books, we needed to find a way to make Adlam uh, Bindipular back then um, usable on computers or, or typewriters. So when we moved to America here in 2007, and uh, I moved here in 2003 and my brother came in 2007, then we started looking for companies that would help us solve that problem. That's how we came across a company in Seattle that decided, uh, even though Adlam was not, in, uh, Bindipular was not encoded, they figured a way um, to create a keyboard for us and also fonts. So how did they do that? They just layered uh, Bindipular or our writing system on top of the Arabic uh, code points. So because why did they do that? It's because Arabic was right to left and also our writing system was also right to, uh, right to left. So they did that, but the problem with that, so that self solved a huge problem for us. Now we could use Adlam on computers. We could uh, multiply, write as many books as we can and print them. And then uh, that helped a lot with the spread of Adlam. So when I, in 2008, uh, I went to Guinea and then uh, we purchased some computers here. That's what you see here on the images here. I was showing people how to uh, download or install um the keyboard and use the font on their computers uh to write books um as they wanted so and this led to the spread of adlam we sent this guy here buba karbari to teach adlam across west africa he went to burkina mali all the way to nigeria and cameroon and that's how the alphabet spread a lot in those countries but there were still some challenges because that coincided with the 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 spread of the internet for example in africa people have started you know coming across the internet but the problem is that you couldn't use bindipolar uh, on the internet and also the problem was that if you write something you know using that uh, font and keyboard created in seattle uh, if you send it to somebody if they didn't have the font installed on their computer all they would see is arabic so realize um uh, the solution to that was to get Adlam encoded. So we had written to Unicode uh, previously, but we went as lucky. But fortunately, through some of the connections that my brother built um, through the seminaries that he attended from, um, you know, the school program that he was doing at PCC, Portland Community College, we were able to reach uh, Deborah Anderson and who eventually helped us navigate through the process of getting Adlam encoded. Um, so we were invited down here uh, to meet the Unicode Technical Committee. They reviewed the first proposal that was submitted and all the corrections were made. And eventually in 2016, as you can see down here, uh, an email that Deborah sent to us, uh, we were very excited to find out that Adlam was encoded. So we thought our job was done. We thought now we're going to be able to find Adlam everywhere because that was our understanding originally. We thought, okay, we we'll just log on to Windows computers or Mac computer or go on the internet, we we'll just see Adlam there. But that didn't happen. We waited months and months. We we're not seeing anything happen. We were like, my brother and I, what happened? Maybe something is wrong. But we came to find out that this is, that was just the beginning of the process because basically you have to deal with all the different companies to get Adlam integrated into their system. Uh, how do you go about that? You know, how do you meet with Google? How do you meet with Microsoft or Apple to get Adlam, you know, in their system? But for, fortunately, um, a guy that my brother um, had worked with uh, called Randy has written a long blog on Adlam. And that blog was picked up by a journalist who used to work for the Maybe he still works there for the Atlantic magazine. And then based on that, he started to do research on Adlam and write an article on it. He reached out to us and then he, write, he wrote the article. Um, and the article was picked up um, around the country and even around the world by many news media who reached out to us. But the best thing is that the, that article landed on um, Craig Cornelius' desk. So he read the article and he also talked about Cherokee in it. 
And that basically what opened the door for us because he read it and then he decided to reach out to us. He wrote us an email asking if we wanted to talk with him. We said, yeah, it's Google. Who doesn't want to? We've been waiting and Adlam is not showing up anyway. Why not talk to uh, Google? So we were very excited talking to him and he invited us to come down to Google headquarters to talk about Adlam. And then that's how they started working. Um, so first, this is, I'm not going to get back to this. So this basically shows you the Unicode uh, chart for Adlam uh, and some of the characteristics, 34 letters, because we ended up adding six letters. And now the script is no longer called Bindipula, it's called Adlam. Uh, and that nam name was derived from the first four letters of the alphabet, Adalama. And it basically also means, coincidentally, uh, the alphabet that will prevent people from disappearing or from being lost in our language. Alkule Dandai de Lenyol Majere. And we did not come up with that name because when we were trying to get the proposal submitted to Unicode, uh, I forgot his name, uh, the guy who helps us write the proposal, he has suggested that it's good that we come up with a name. Michael Everson, yes, thank you. And uh, so we reached out to the Atlan promoters back in Africa and asked them that we needed a name for this. We can't call it Bindupula because it's kind of long. So they came up with that name and it was easy, but we had struggled for many years to come up with a simple name where we couldn't and those people helped us. So this, as you can see here, so we added six more letters to for the other languages that are in Guinea there um, for sounds that do not exist in Pula like Ha, Ba, etc. Um, so then, like I was saying, uh, this is the article that I was talking about, um, and then how we came to Google, and then this is what Google did to, for us. They created uh, two fonts for us, Notus and Adlam, uh, that was, you know, where the letters were joined, and then one where the letters were not um, connected, so you can write both ways. And they also supported Adlam on Chromebooks uh, at the end of 2017. And also on Android 8, uh, at the end of 2017, they also created a keyboard for us um, for in order for us to be able to use uh, the fonts and write uh, using Android phones. And eventually, as you will see, they, up, they have updated the Nodo fonts because the original Nodo fonts that you can see here, uh, we were not very happy with it, but it was pretty good for us at the time. But eventually it got upgraded, as you can see uh, on the left there. Uh, on the new keyboard, uh, it has the up, uh, the updated node fonts. But as you can see here, Adlam only worked on Android 8 and above. So we had some issues because many people in Africa <clears throat> didn't have access to, to, to Android. And as Craig himself, uh, he saw when he went to attend a conference that was organized in Mamu uh, in Guinea at the end of uh, 2017, beginning of 2018. Um, this is the conference. And you can see Craig there uh, being welcomed in Mamu. <laughs> and, uh, but many, most of the people who attended this conference did not have phones running Android 8. And most of them were using Android 6 and 5 and even, even before. So a company uh, um, called Jamra Patel helped us create some tools that allowed us to use Adlam uh, even on phones uh, that didn't have Android 8. So they created a keyboard that you could use that would be, you write in it, it will just send the text as an image. So even for those people that didn't have Android 8 or were using iPhone where Adlam was not even supported, uh, they could use Adlam. Uh, they also created a keyboard for us to use on Windows. Um, and they helped create other tools. As you can see, they created a calculator um and a currency converter or measurement converter that people could use because these are very important things because the the thing is not just to create a script if you create a script and it's not being used or people don't find it useful they won't use it you know they won't get excited about it so these kind of tools are needed you know to support a script especially a new script um so some of the challenges that we've had with uh you know and adlam um, so far with the support or some of the things that we want to have right now or that think people, things that people are asking for uh, regularly is Google Translate. Uh, it's something that's very important to us uh, as most people have access to internet and there's a lot of information in other languages so they would have, they would love to have that, inform those, you know, that information in our language as well. 
and also the user interface. And there are some issues with handling punctuations and then Google Sheets for, you know, doing calculations and, you know, using Google Lens. So those are some of the issues that we have uh, that we hope uh, will be fixed uh, on Google, on Google's platforms. So the Jamra Patel, those are the people that I just talked about who created all of these tools. They recently went to Guinea with us to attend a conference that was organized in Mali by the government of Mali, because uh, most people probably don't know, but the government of Mali uh, recently have decided to um, introduce uh, education in our national or local languages. So they want to gradually get rid of French. <clears throat> and, in, and they also decided in order to teach those local languages, they will use local scripts. So they were in, they invited us uh, at the beginning of this year to go to Mali, where we attended a conference. And uh, Craig did a presentation there. And Jamra Patel also, Jamra Patel did also a presentation. And after that, they went with us uh, from Gambia to Guinea uh, to see some of the activities that are being done uh, around Adlam and the enthusiasm or the progress that has been made uh, on Adlam on the ground. So after Google, uh, uh, we were lucky to also get uh, supported by Microsoft. It all started from another conference, Unicode conference that we attended here um, in the Bay Area. And we met with Andrew Glass. He had already started working uh, on Adlam. Um, so we made some revisions on the work and then he decided to invite us uh, the Microsoft headquarters uh, in Seattle where we did a presentation on Adlam. And these are all the people um, that flew uh, across the country uh, from our community to attend. So Microsoft uh, support Windows since Windows 10 and they created a keyboard for us. And now Adlam is available in all of their products, Office products. They also created many fonts for us. So there's a Brima that's used on Windows, and then they created a Kigelia that's used in Office product. And recently, they worked with Jamra Patel to create Adlam display that's used on um, T-shirts and posters, etc. And that font has been very successful um, uh, in Guinea, in Africa. Uh, they also They've gone beyond, Microsoft did not just support us in terms of technology, they've done a lot more. Uh, as you can see here, um, they released a book uh, about the story of Adlam, and they also released, published it on their website, and apparently is one of the most read articles um, or publications on their website. They did it in French and Pular and also in English. And in addition to that, they've started uh, recently, uh, this year, printing books uh, for children. That's a copy that you can see there, Aprana uh, Ekri. That's for um, Fulani people, and this is an example here. Um, for children that are trying to learn Adlam, who speak, there is a version, version in English, and there is also another version in French. They also uh, added also this book to teach you not only the alphabet, but also um, with images of uh, animals and uh, fruits, etc. So those are some of the things they've been uh, helping of, um, with, and that has had a lot of impact. There's a lot more enthusiasm for the alphabet, a lot more excitement, and people are purchasing you know, more uh, tools now, more computers to equip their uh, learning centers. Recent, recently, one opened in Sierra Leone, and another one opened in Liberia, where, computers, where, where people purchase computers uh, to equip uh, their centers so they can teach people how to use Adlam uh, on computers. And also they tried to, they worked on, uh, with Macan to create a documentary in Adlam. Uh, they sent a team in Guinea who filmed, uh, we went with them, visited uh, Guinea, and then we also will, uh, went with them to Mali. And they released that, that they, I, they worked on that documentary and extracts of, from that was submitted in some competitions like the Cannes Festival, that happened in June of this year, where he won uh, seven awards, including two Grand Prix. And also, he was just all, uh, awarded uh, seven prizes at the London International Awards. Uh, so these are some of the images uh, with um, the Microsoft officials and McCann at Cannes in France. Uh, but some of, there are still some issues or 
support needed, for example, in Bing search. This is a comparison between Adlam. When I search for the word Adlam in the Adlam script uh, in Bing and Google, in Bing it doesn't display anything, but in Google, for example, which is interesting, is that it recognizes actually that I'm looking for Adlam and even displays information not only in Adlam but also in English. So this is something that we also wish could be available um, uh, with Microsoft product and also translation and user interfaces and then a better support for Adlam numerals. And, and recently Adlam also has been supported by Apple. Uh, it started in 2021 with the release of uh, iOS 13. Back then you could just use Adlam, uh, see Adlam uh, when somebody sends you a message but you couldn't use it. Eventually, with the release of iOS 14, uh, they created a keyboard and used the Noto fonts uh, by Google uh, to integrate in their system. So now Adlam is fully supported, but what is interesting with Apple is that not only did they support Adlam, but they also translated some of the user interfaces into Adlam. As you can see here, uh, this is a picture of a phone. You can see the, number, the time and the calendar are all in Adlam. Um, in both pictures. Uh, this has led, uh, this was exciting to many people and even led to my, my mom switching from the usual phone that she used to have to Adlan because she could only, she doesn't speak English or uh, French. So it was easier for her to use a phone that was 100% in her language. So she switched to an iPhone um, recently. And also one of my sisters did the same thing. Um, and this has been happening with some people who can afford, but you know, uh, it's a lot easier to access an Android phone than an iPhone in Africa. But people who could afford it uh, because of these features uh, normally switch uh, to using iPhones. Uh, we still have some issues. So they did this in with iOS 14, but then with the release of iOS, uh, the most recent iOS, I forgot which version it is. So now you can no longer see the numerals or the digits or like the time in Adlam. Now it reverted back to uh, the, the Arabic uh, numerals, which was kind of weird, but we reached out to them. Hopefully it will be fixed in future releases. So Adlam works on Facebook, but as you can see here, we have more issues actually with it. Folks, uh, Adlam works on Facebook only on the full version of the application on Android or iPhone. Uh, and also on the browser, the full browser, desktop version. But it does not work on the mobile browser, and it does not also work on the version of the Facebook app called Facebook Lite. So when you display that, uh, all you will see is um, tofu, or sometimes when you display Adlam on their browser, this is what you will see. You write a whole sentence, but it just picks one letter and decides to display that. As you can see, it's just ba, 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 ba. That's all it's showing on, on Facebook mobile browser. So hopefully, uh, we've tried to reach out to them many times. Hopefully, they will uh, fix this. Um, so how is Adlam spreading? Is um, Adlam is being very successful, you know, in a very short period of time. Um, what we did is that we leverage existing schools, you know, because the Fulani people are very familiar with learning. Uh, they were using we use religious school or Quranic schools to integrate Adlam. Uh, we also, you know, people are opening community learning centers. Some people are going to homes or hiring people to come over to their home to teach their kids. Uh, and Adlam is spreading a lot through the markets because a lot of people, Fulani people are invo involved in commerce. So in the markets, in shops, and some people hire people one-on-one -on -one to come and teach them at home. And that's how Adlam has been spreading uh, a lot. We also use modern tools like WhatsApp, uh, YouTube, and Facebook, as you can see here, these are different uh, uh, pages that are available on YouTube. For example, this one, Finde Adlam, and it's also available on Facebook. We use Telegram. Uh, this is an image of um, a Telegram, different Telegram groups uh, over there to the left, and also WhatsApp groups uh, that you can see. Uh, for example, Adlam, Fatim Adlam Full Full Day is a class that has over 300 students learning Adlam. So we have many, many of these on WhatsApp and Telegram. So now Adlam has become over the past few years an integral part of our culture because it's a source of pride for us. People use it now in clothing, in ceremonies, in art and painting, 
even now competitions are being held in poetry because of Adlam. It has also um, created a lot of interest for the language, a lot of excitement. And we have yearly conferences uh, in different countries uh, to talk about progress in Adlam. And as you, this is a map of Cameroon that somebody actually did in the country of Cameroon that shows the different regions uh, there um, in Adlam. Um, you can see this Adlam on a taxi, somebody using reading a newspaper that's being published in Adlam, and also somebody shop using the Adlam script. Uh, we released also an online magazine it's called Tabalde for Adlam. Um, so Guinea recently has released its um, sustainable uh, development goals. Uh, their goal is to teach 2 million people how to read and write uh, in our languages by 2030. Uh, the problem is that more than two thirds, almost three quarters of the population in Guinea does not know how to read or write in French, which is the official language. So in order to give them access to help them get, gain access to information, they're trying to alphabetize them uh, in the local languages. But when they realize that Adlam has already been successful in doing that because we do that across Guinea, so they have started partnering with us to leverage some of the, you know, the methods that we are using, especially since they don't have the funding required to meet this. Because I looked at the budget, they were needing $45 million to do this. And we've been doing this uh, voluntarily over the past few years. So they want to le leverage some of that uh, to reach this goal. Um, we were, like I said earlier, we also invited in Mali uh, because the government is exploring ways to integrate Atlam uh, into their project so that it can be used for full full day. And this is us meeting with the Ministry of Refundation in Mali. I don't know how I'm doing about time, but uh, we still have a lot of challenges because what we realize is that, you know, there are so many companies, technology companies, and the issue is that you have to reach basically to each one of them in order to uh, get your scripts supported. So I wish there was a way where there's like one single place where, you know, like you get encoded and everybody just, you know, based off of that can decide to support. We reached out to some companies that would flat out tell us, you know, we don't support, for example, right to left uh, writing systems. And so those are some of the challenges that we've had. Like we've had the challenge like their TikTok and their application that's used to create videos. It does not actually support any right to left writing system whether even Arabic, which is a huge uh, writing system. Um, so some of these things contributing to Adlam success, like I've mentioned some of them. Uh, the number one is that Adlam came at a time when people needed it, because there has been talk about uh, throughout history about the Fulani people uh, needing their own alphabet, because we are a very proud uh, community. So we wanted to have an alphabet of our own. So when Adlam came and it was just uh, embraced by all of the uh, community leaders and elders uh, in Guinea and throughout many countries in West Africa. And it's also very simple, it's 23 letters with very distinct vowels, unlike Arabic, you know, or Hebrew, for example. Uh, so you can distinctly tell what what is A, what is U, and then the letters keep keep their pronunciation throughout. They never change, unlike in English, where, you know, O-U-G-H can be off in one word and be something else in another word. So that makes it easy to embrace for people. And um, we've also benefited from the connections that we've had with uh, people at Google and Microsoft and uh, Apple. That has helped us a lot. What people don't realize is that, you know, supporting a script uh, is not limited to just having it encoded but it's also creating all of the tools that go with it to help promote it, to make people realize they can use it. But otherwise they will not have the excitement to use the alphabet because if you create an alphabet and nobody can use it on their phone, on their computer or see it online, you know, what would be the point of it? So that's why it's important. Uh, we always remind people this, that you know, if people are not buying, for example, Microsoft products or Google products, it's probably because they don't know how to use it or because they don't understand it because it's not in their language. When I was in Guinea uh, a couple of years ago, I met a young man there who realized that his mom cannot use his phone, her phone to call because she cannot even find numbers in her phone because that requires you to know how to read. So he created an application uh, that allows her mom to interact with the phone 
uh, by speaking to it. So that just tells you, um, for people like that, um, you know, there isn't a lot of need uh, for a phone, except maybe to make calls. But there are there are many more things you can do with your phone, except calling. But if you, if it's not in a language that you can use, uh, then you will not get excited about purchasing a phone. So people are very motivated and. Uh, one of the things also that's helping Adlam is that we've been involved in effort to standardize the language. You know, as I said, Fulfulde or Pula is spoken from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to Ethiopia on the Red Sea. So that creates, you know, different dialects and varieties that can make communication between the Fulani people even difficult. But we've been, you know, working on standardizing the language. Thank you. And uh, my brother has written a grammar book a grammar book of more than 1,000 pages to now to help standardize the language and to um, ease communication between the community. Um, so one of the impacts of Adlam is that um, it has leveled the playing field for people because it used to be the people who have uh, um, prestige in the community are people who were educated in Western schools or Arabic schools. But now, if you know how to read or write Adlam, because you already speak the language, you can get involved in debate, you can write books. And we have people who've never been to any schools, formal schools, they've written 30, 10, 20 books. We have a guy, for example, in Labe who's written more than 30 books, and he was invited a few years ago at Harvard, where he gave a talk uh, based on the work he's been doing on Adlam. Um, so it also helped a lot of women because many women don't have access to formal education, so now they can stay home and get educated uh, in Adlam. So all they need to do is just learn the alphabet so now they can read books and write, you know, and deal with their, handle their business. They also give people access to information through the newspaper or Tabalde, which is an online website where we publish information. There's a lot of enthusiasm for the language. Now there are competition everywhere. A few years ago, it was hard to see somebody online, for example, on Facebook or YouTube, uh, freely talking about Pula. But now there are many, many, many pages of people talking about Pula, whether they're using Adlam or not. So it just encouraged people, it created more enthusiasm for the language. And uh, so um, this is all I had. Uh, sorry that I went quickly through the presentation. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I don't know if you have time. Uh, have like one, question. one question. And uh, we'll be around here too as well. Yes. Yes. Hmm, that's a very good can you repeat the question? So the, what he because there are a lot of communities that are basically uh, creating or trying to uh, promote their writing systems. So what kind of advice based on the experience that we went through, uh, we can give, right? Is that the question? I thought, yes. Um, so one, one of the things that have helped us is uh, not waiting. Because when we created the alphabet, we started teaching it. And then people embrace it. We didn't wait for the government. We didn't wait for recognition from the government or from institutions to help us, you know, spread Adlam. So you, there was like an organic or grassroots movement to help with Adlam. And also, you know, creating newspapers, you know, tools that people can use, uh, books. Those are some of the things that can help a, 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 write a new writing system. But most of Above all, also getting the support from all of these uh, big tech companies, because if people realize they can use their language and their script in the phone or a computer, they'll get excited about it because it's a lot easier. So that's why that's actually one of the most important things uh, that can help a new script uh, become more popular and become successful. So, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, great to kind of start getting a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. Okay.